Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got big news in the PC world today, September 1st, 2020. It was the day that NVIDIA announced this new Ampere line of RTX 3000 series GPUs, debuting on September 17th with the RTX 3080 at $700. It will be followed by the RTX 3090 on September 24th at $1,500. And then the RTX 3070 will come in October at $500. Now, if you've followed NVIDIA over the years, you know sometimes they do hit a home run or even a grand slam in terms of GPU tech, and sometimes they just tread water like they did in the last generation. The RTX 2000 series was not greeted that warmly by enthusiasts, and I could tell in today's product announcement that NVIDIA learned its lesson. This new 3000 series is the real deal. And while they focus on RTX performance, that's ray tracing performance, which is up to two times faster than it was on the 2000 series, like the RTX 2080 Ti that I have here, the truth is that some of their benchmarks show that the typical rasterization performance that you use in most games is actually really good too. I have calculated 65 to 75% better performance generation over generation in the past two years, looking at the RTX 3070 and the 3080 versus their predecessors, the 2070 and the 2080 that came in around the same price two years ago. So that's a pretty big leap. If you were expecting double performance, well, you were expecting too much. In previous years, we've gotten about a 25% boost in performance per dollar. Now we're looking at 75% and up to two times in ray tracing titles. Now, look, I'm not going to focus at all on ray tracing in this video. You probably think, a lot of you probably think it's basically a bunch of hogwash. Ray tracing effects are cool. Most games don't use them. End of story. Let's talk about the rasterization performance and then the specs of these cards. Now, if you follow the channel, you may know that about six weeks ago, I actually posted my predictions on the RTX 3000 series. At the time, I predicted the 3070 would come in at $600. The RTX 3080 would come in at $800, and the, what I call the RTX 3080 Ti, which is now the 3090, would come in at $1,400. I'm happy to say that I was wrong in my predictions. While the prices are overall a little bit lower, the performance boost is actually quite a bit higher. So we're going to see the RTX 3070 at least match the RTX 2080 Ti. The 3080 is probably going to be, I'd say, 30% faster and that 3090 will probably be a full 50 to 70% faster than the RTX 2080 Ti. This is a grand slam by Nvidia, and as Jensang Huang said in the video, sometimes the stars align. And as he also said, this is the time for Pascal gamers, all you guys using 1000 series GPUs, to upgrade. And look, I, I sense a bit of contrition in his voice, and he's an enthusiast just like the rest of us. He knows the 2000 series was not what we were looking for. This 3000 series looks to be the real deal, like I said. So let's dig into the specs of these three GPUs and let's focus on where they're gonna work and perhaps where some of these GPUs are just a little bit too hot to handle. Starting with the CUDA core counts, these are really beyond belief and it remains to be seen whether or not these are actually equivalent to previous gen CUDA cores. Frankly, it seems a little bit too high maybe these aren't actually quite as efficient because at 5,888, the 3070 would blow away the RTX 2080 Ti, which has 4,352 CUDA cores. And then we go up to the 3090, which is 10,496. Again, well over twice as many CUDA cores as the 2080 Ti. So it will be interesting to see how those pan out in terms of performance per CUDA core. We can see that the base and boost clocks are definitely on par, if not a little bit higher than previous gens, so that's a great thing. We also have a new memory technology on the 3080 and 3090, that GDDR6X. Now, NVIDIA doesn't list it, but the speed of these chips is a lot higher. So it's like 19 and 19.5 gigabits per second versus 15 gigabits per second. You also have a very wide bus, 320 bit and 384 bit. So the memory bandwidth is gonna be phenomenal. But there is a downside to this huge boost in performance, and that is the size and the power use of these cards. While the RTX 3070 comes in at a very svelte 9.5 inches, that's great. We don't have a 10.6 inch reference card for the first time in ages from NVIDIA. Instead, the 3080 comes in at 11.2 inches, and then the 3090 is 12.3 inches long, 5.4 inches wide, and it's a triple slot card. So this is a serious beast, and I doubt we'll see smaller cards from board partners. Then we have those power use numbers. 220 watts is all right. That's around the level of an RTX 
2080. So of course the 3070 will outperform that. So that's great. But 320 and 350 watts from the 3080 and the 3090, that's a lot of power use. It's going to be hard to get that out of small form factor cases. And a lot of other midsize cases are going to struggle with that heat output as well. You're really going to have to focus on your thermal management. Now, we also have a more efficient manufacturing node that's the 8 nanometer process from Samsung. So NVIDIA could really dig in here. They both went up in power use and up in efficiency, and that's where you get this huge generational leap in performance. They also, of course, have a better cooler on their Founders Edition card. And I should note that EVGA actually lists of its 3090 offerings, three of them are liquid cooled out of a total of five, and two of the 43080s are liquid cooled. I think this is a sign of things to come. These TDP numbers are serious. So while we're getting a huge leap in performance generation over generation, those power use numbers are pretty serious as well. And so the board partners are really gonna have to struggle with that. And PC builders like you are gonna have to struggle with it too. If you want that performance, you may not have to pay a ton more than previous generations, but you're gonna to have to plan out that build a little bit better in terms of thermal management. Now, the other thing that surprised me beyond the TDP numbers was that very high VRAM allocation on the 3090. 24 gigabytes is Titan class, folks. Now, I estimated this card would come in at $1,400. It's actually gonna be $1,500, but I would have never guessed that you'd get that much VRAM. So for a huge boost in VRAM, over double that of the 2080 Ti, I think that extra $100 is definitely worth it. In fact, I view this as a discounted Titan card. Instead of paying $2,500 for that card, you're paying $1,500. It's gonna be a huge boon to content creators. And I know the gamers out there don't need this, but consider it's basically free. Look, Nvidia could have released that 3090 with 12 gigabytes on that 384-bit bus, and no one would have even flinched. They could have sold all those cards out. Instead, they're giving you 24 gigabytes. I assume they just got a really good deal from Micron and are throwing it in. It's a really good price for a card of this performance level and VRAM level. It's no joke. Now, I will be picking up a 3090 at retail. I'll be getting in line just like the rest of you would. I don't get my cards for free. I have to buy them over the counter just like everybody else. I'm expecting a lot of demand and very little supply, but once I get my hands on one, I will be putting it through its paces and benchmarking it against my RTX 2080 Ti. Now, in terms of the 3080 and then the 3070 coming in October, I'm particularly excited about the 3070 for small form factor builders. I think that this card is gonna be great because it doesn't exceed that 250 watts that is pretty much the limit for a small form factor case like this one. And in addition, you're getting that Founders Edition at 9.5 inches. That gives me hope that a lot of the other partners will be putting out cards at 10.6 inches or below. Now, in terms of the 3080 and 3090, I think it may be the end of the road for getting those into small form factor systems. I doubt many partners will be creating those cards below the Founders Edition size of 11.2 inches for the 3080 and 12.3 inches for the 3090. If you have the ability to pick up a liquid cooled card, you may be able to fit that in your small form factor system. But again, that's going to depend on your case, whether you can fit that in. So that's the only downside I see on these cards. I think the prices are completely fair, even that 3090 at $1,500. I'm really excited about this. I'd love to hear from you guys what you think about the 3000 series release. Put your comments down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. As always, I do appreciate a like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.